All right. Okay. I think good. Yes. Okay. Well, I think Vic already said a bunch of stuff that I was going to say, but here goes. Um, why did I make this movie? One, because my husband told me so. That's a very short version of it. Um, the longer story is, I like atheism. I've been working as a filmmaker since 2002. And I like America. Every chance we get to go there, we've been going there since our honeymoon in 2001. So, I like it. all those things put together. That's three nice things. And then I started reading more about atheism in America and reading the Friendly Atheist blog and Greta Christina. And I think it was the beginning of um, 2012 when I heard about the story of Jessica Alquist. And I think what her story um, in Rhode Island, I don't know if you've heard it, but girl sues her school board for a prayer banner in her school and basically gets the rat of the whole state and eventually country against her. Um, and I just couldn't understand how that was. For me, America was a country that had religious freedom. Why were atheists so hated? And I thought maybe if people would get to see what atheists are really like, that might make a difference. And rather than just donate some money to um, things like Foundation Beyond Belief, which I think is really great, I kind of wanted to really do something. And that's why I made this documentary where um, I go through a whole bunch of the topics that people really tend to have a go at at atheists. Like, how can you be a moral person if you don't believe in God? And why do you hate Christmas? All those kind of things. Um, and people have been nice about it. So I hope you will like it too. Um, and I hope you'll think that it has achieved, well, that it kind of achieved my goals of making, putting a friendlier face on atheism than people are used to. <laughs> so. Without further ado, I'll see you again in about 90 minutes. I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you. So uh, if anybody has uh, questions, go ahead and uh, she should be able to hear you. If not, I'll repeat the question. But uh, let's see. Sylvia, are you there? I am. All right. You disappeared. OK. <laughs> OK, right. you're back. Well, we just finished the, uh, finished the film and uh, ready for a little video from you now. Oh, uh, sorry. Wrong just... button. <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> so we have one question right here. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for a wonderful documentary. You prefaced the movie by a reference to a young woman, I believe in Rhode Island. What was her atheist problem? If you would, in a few sentences, share that with us. Yeah, the question was about Jessica Alquist in Rhode Island. Oh, okay. And what's, sorry, what's the question? About, about if you could talk a little bit about Jessica Alquist. Okay, Jessica Alquist, when... Uh, she went to school to West Cranston High School in Rhode Island and in her school there was this prayer banner that had been up there since the 1960s and she kind of objected to that seeing as it was a public school that it wouldn't be allowed to be there because of the First Amendment and she decided to challenge her school about it, took it to the school board, I think when she was 15, yeah she was a sophomore so about 15. Um, School board said, well, um, in no uncertain terms, no way we're taking that down. And then with the help of the ACLU, she sued the school board and they had to obviously back down and take the prayer banner down. Um, but the result of that was that she was completely ostracized at her school. Um, florists in the area didn't want to send flowers to her um, when the Freedom From Religion Foundation wanted to send their flowers so they had to get a florist who was from out of town. 
on Twitter she got a whole bunch of rape threats and death threats and all nasty things. Her congressman called her an evil little thing. All those things happened to her. I just couldn't understand why anyone would want to do that to a 15-year-old girl, or by the time 70. It doesn't really matter how old she was, but why would anyone do that? And you think in a state like Rhode Island, it's not Bible Belt area, so it's not exactly where you'd imagine all those things, but it did still happen, and especially since Rhode Island was one of the freedom of religion states <laughs> when it was founded, so it was to get away from the Puritans in Boston. So. That's, that's kind of her story. Um, also, the nice thing was that then a whole bunch of atheists got behind her and um, Hammond Meta from the Friendly Atheist uh, website, um, he got together and did some funding for her and got together a scholarship fund for her. I think they raised about between thirty and forty thousand dollars for her. So at least there's a happy story. And she was at the Reason Rally back in, was it 2012 or 2011? I think 2012 or thereabouts. So, She's, she's, I liked her story. Well, I didn't like what happened to her, but the way it ended did seem to do a lot of good. All right. Was banner, though, oh, yes, yeah, so it was a prayer the banner in the, uh, a banner. In the yes. gym. It was a Bible I, I don't know exactly Bible where it was in the school, but it had something about I believe it was in the gym. thinking our Holy Father. It was a that. thanking thing. Yeah, but thanking it's explicitly God. Christian. Uh, Big, huge yes. banner on the on the wall. So, yes. Uh, yeah, Joshi, back here. Can I just do this? Okay, uh, right here. Yes, yes, you can do that. Feel free. <laughs> Is this going to be? Is there any plans to distribute this, uh, like on national public uh, television, or? Uh, what what kind of distribution do you foresee this happening? Well, at the moment it's um, available on Amazon to buy on DVD. You can also buy it on Blu-ray, but that is um, that's directly done from me because not a lot of people are too bothered about Blu-rays. But the best way to get it is um, there's a website where you can buy a online um, a high definition download for just ten dollars. And that's um, on VHX.tv. But if you go to the website, hugganatheist.org, um, you can get all the details there. And I'm sure Vic can tell you as well where it is that you can download a film. Um, we don't have any deals with places like Netflix because it's incredibly complicated with a lot of legal work, which basically means I might get a penny <laughs> for <laughs> the privilege of being on Netflix and actually. To get into that privilege, you're actually having to pay up front about $1,600. So by the time you get anything back from that, um, I'll be old and retired, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so if you want it, it's all very independent and going. So there's the website. That's how you can get it. And like your group, a whole bunch of groups around the country have been showing it as well. So. All right, question. Is, uh, I had a slightly different question. What were some of your uh, filming locations? Okay, we filmed in Florida um, twice. In St. Augustine in Florida, that's where the wedding was. Um, Mary Ellen Hooper, she was in Florida as well. And um, uh, Bridget Godet, she was also in Florida. Oh, that was. Then we went to Las Vegas. After Las Vegas, it was New York. Washington DC for, what's it called, the um, American Humanist Association, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, we went to Boston and Harvard to interview Greg Epstein and James Croft. Um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> Michigan, Chicago, Kentucky, where else did we go? Austin. Oh, and then we went home <laughs> for a break. Then we went to San Francisco and Austin and Florida again. <laughs> so yeah, those were all the locations. <laughs> So. Yes. Oh, right here in front. Often when people do documentaries, they, especially about a movement or about um, a group of people, they go um, to those who are the most um, visible, you know, the sort of the celebrities of, of the movement. 
And I applaud you for not doing that. I applaud you for actually showing people who, at least to me, appear to be people who are dealing with regular uh, work with, with their daily lives and people who do have a say that uh, does not have to be subsumed under the umbrella of the big, you know, the big celebrity. Of course, you did have a uh, few people who were, uh, you know, who had published books or were professors. How did you, um, was that a, um, a conscious choice that you made? And if Very so, much. And if so, um, how did you go about finding these people since you live in a different country? Well, it was very much a conscious choice to go for um, regular people. I wanted people that um, anyone could identify with as this could be my next door neighbor rather than some professor in England somewhere. So I wanted to be able to get people that could be your neighbor or your cousin or your daughter or anyone you kind of come in contact with on a daily basis to show this is just regular people who go through life like you and like you do, just slightly different beliefs. Um, how did I go about finding people? Well, I'm lucky to have good friends. <laughs> um, so a, a couple of people we got in touch with who I know are atheists, um, like Jeremy and um, Jennifer, uh, one of the couples we interviewed. She was actually the one who got me um, into the whole atheism thing in America. She would post things because she's involved with the CFI in Michigan. She would post things on her Facebook page and that's how I got to know about atheism in America being slightly not so appreciated. Um, so I really wanted her in there. Then I was incredibly lucky that my friends got married and they had a humanist wedding. So that was ideal to fit them in as well. And then um, as soon as I started talking about this project and doing crowdfunding, other people got in touch as well. For example, the girl Ellen with cerebral palsy, she got in touch because when I first started that, um, I hadn't planned in to put in anything about dealing with illness. I planned in to put in grief and she suggested if I put this in, I should also consider illness. I thought, well, that's fine. How do you want to do it? She explained to her that she, she explained to me that she had cerebral palsy and some of the issues she had had as coming out as an atheist. And then she said, yeah, I'll just have to ask my mom. I didn't realize when she emailed me that she was only 16 years old. But, but I, she was actually one of the people I appreciated most in the whole documentary. I thought she was quite inspiring when I talked to her at 16. She had really told about more things than I had at 16. My brain was on boys. So. <laughs> So, yeah, I just got incredibly lucky and as soon as you meet people, they say, have you talked to this person or have you talked to that person or try these people. I mean, there are actually people we interviewed who didn't make the final cut, which I felt horrible about because they said great things and they were wonderful people. But, but it was already becoming longer than it should have been. So, that's that. I hope that's good. Uh, okay. Hello. Question you. Um, you, you, you didn't show any questions being asked, you did show just the answers, but um, I saw that you were also the editor and for me the editing was so well done that we didn't really need these questions, the answers sort of made, made it um, appear you know, fluent. Um, while you were making this process, did you have certain questions answered for yourself? Like after having done this project, do you have some answers that you were aware of having a, of, of, of a question that you were asking yourself before the movie or maybe not even aware of the process of that basically helped you answer for yourself? Well, when I started out, I had a bunch of questions that I was going to ask everybody and then questions more specific to their situations like if somebody was dealing with illness or couple in situations so that was prepared in advance and the plan was as well that um, while I was interviewing the people that I would be more in the documentary myself and um, get somebody to do a voiceover as well but then it turned out all these people that I was interviewing were way too interesting I couldn't add anything to that that would make it any better so I just left it up to them to say things 
which is why I'm just sitting there all silent in the shots, but sometimes, well, things change when we came to the editing process. Um, it was nice for me to um, hear the different answers, because with some things you, you already have your own idea of how you think about it, but getting other people to talk about it, I think, ha, ah, I never thought of it that way, so it was a nice listening job for me as well. Um, and I really appreciate it. Everybody was incredibly open with me. Um, lots of people cried while they were doing their interviews, so I think that was nice. And I also had tons of laughs as well, so I'm really happy with the people I interviewed. They, they were eloquent and open and said better things than I ever could have. So. Yeah, um, I'm really glad you had a lot more than just people talking about atheism. You had families, children, you had a marriage, you talked about illness and also about death. So you had a lot of variety in there. That was very good. Who did the photography? Did you have a professional? <laughs> it was a lot of the interviews because we were on a micro budget were a case of setting up the cameras and pressing record sitting down and hoping nothing would fail while you were, while I was recording. <laughs> so and as it was um, my background is in filmmaking so I've done all that. Um, at other points we did have other people operating the cameras as well who've worked with me and who volunteered along the way. So most of that, yeah, it, it's pretty much it was a very small team who worked on it, which you can probably tell by the credits. It's like six people that actually worked on it. That's amazing. <laughs> As I said, I have good friends who, who were very happy to be involved with a project. Um, because I, some of my friends, um, because I'm a filmmaker, I've been to conventions in the US. Um, some of the people I met there were happy to help along as well. So, yeah, actually, I'm really lucky now that I keep mentioning how good my friends are. <laughs> so, that was that. All right, any more? Oh, one more question over here. I don't know if you're familiar with the denomination Unitarian Universalists, each congregation is independent of, to themselves, but the one that I belong to here in Houston welcomes atheists, agnostics, Christians, ex-Jews, ex-Baptists, lesbians, homosexuals, transvestites. It's a welcoming community that would serve the same purpose as a Methodist or an Episcopal or Catholic church, a community Standing on the side of love, that is our philosophy. And it has no doctrinal requirement. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that, it would, you would be interested in learning about it. Yeah. Um, I, I actually have one of my filmmaker friends, his wife is a minister in um, one of the Universalist churches in Austin, of all places. Um, so, yes, I have heard of um, them, and I do think it's a really nice idea to welcome anyone without prejudice like that. So, thank you for doing that. <laughs> and thank you for coming along today as well. All right. Uh, looks like that's uh, any more questions. All right. Well, if we could give another hand for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if anyone would have any questions at any point, um, find me on Facebook or anywhere. I'll glad, happy to talk about everything, anything. All right, thank you, Sylvia. Bye-bye. Thanks, Vic. Bye. Thank you.